This video is for MYP students who are preparing their design summative assessment document and they want to get top marks. They want to get eight out of eight for strand three. Oops, that says strand one. Let me fix that up. Strand three. Okay, so let's start with the assessment criteria in mind. It says here, explains how the solution could be improved. Now in the design process, when you build something, um, you often, often you're constantly trying to make it better. Um, that's just natural part of the design process. Uh, but sometimes you've got some big ambitions and you wanna do something, but your skills or your time and your resources prevent, prevent you from actually making this happen. So in this criterion here, in this strand three, this is where you explain some of the things that you would like to do if you perhaps did the project again, or if you had better skills, or if you had more time, or if you had some people to help you, or better materials. So this is what this section's all about. Okay, so I'm suggesting here, the way to approach this one is first of all, just start with a, uh, I've talked about a brainstorm list. Now it actually doesn't take much skill to get any product, whether it's a website, a cake, a video, no matter what it is, it doesn't take many much skill to actually start thinking about things that could be better or spotting problems. So this is where this process actually starts. So just start with a list. You can do like a mind map or just a brainstorm list and just start identifying things that you think could be better. If you had a little bit more time or or, or better resources or better skills. What could you change to make it better? Now this actually could be directly linked to strand one and the results strand two. Because what's hap what happened, you've just conducted some tests uh, about your product and you've probably discovered and unearthed some of the problems with your product. In fact, if you're smart, you would have put uh, a question in maybe in strand one and strand two when you're actually interviewing somebody or sending out some feedback this is a question you should actually ask. Like, what do you suggest I should do to improve my product? So here you're actually getting your peers or, your, or, the, or the people who are testing to actually give you the information. So you can use that information you've collected and stick it into strand two. So it's not you actually suggesting things that should be changed, but it's your client or your target audience or your teacher or your peers. And that actually gives a lot more, say, credit or weight to your argument about the things that should be changed. So it's, it's evidence that you've actually conducted some research. Anyway, back to the process. First of all, start with a big long list. Once you've got your big long list, now go back and start expanding on each item of your list. Uh, because basically, what you need to do to get top marks here is identify some changes and then uh, explain them. Okay, next bullet point here, it says here about explaining in detail. So if you want to get top marks here, you need words and images and details. So whoever's marking your work, they understand exactly which specific thing that you think should be changed and, uh, and they can see exactly why, uh, why it should be changed and actually how it should be changed. So it actually doesn't take much skill to say, this item here could be better, but it takes a lot more thought and even a bit of research to actually identify how it should, if this is what it is now, what you should change it to to make it better. And some of the reasons why or justifying exactly why. Uh, the third bullet point here, uh, I'm encouraging uh, people in my class to actually just use some images because sometimes it's much easier to explain something with an image, for example, like colors. If you said, uh, if I was to do this again, I would change the blue to a darker blue. Well, you, it's, there's a limitation with the words that you're using. So what would be a better way to explain it is actually show me the blue that you used, show me the blue that you think we should use, the color blue, and why that blue would be better. And you might say things like it's more visually appealing, or it's closer in sync with the company's color schemes, or that this kind of a blue evokes a certain emotion. So use images to um, to explain yourself it's much easier and then a couple of at words to actually add some meaning to it so a combination of words and images is the best way to actually do this uh, the fourth bullet point um, i've already kind of mentioned that about if you had more more resources uh, what would you do to make things better now this is also a natural part of the design process when you get to the end and you've presented your work, you then realize, you know what, I probably could have changed that, I probably could have done that. So this basically is a form of reflection. You're looking back at your product and thinking about all the things you could do to make it better. 
Okay, um, I've got some images here. Now the last bullet point here I want to emphasize. What, be specific about what you actually think should be changed. Don't just talk about the overall product. Be specific about certain things. And I tell you what, if you're struggling to do this, just refer back to your design specifications. And you can use that as a starting point. So look at the first design specification, look at your product and think, okay, how could I have better met that design specification? Then move on to the next one. So that's a, probably the easiest way to do it. You can even copy and paste your design specification list, stick it in, and then convert it to uh, the things that you could actually improve and use some images and words to explain what, what, sh what specifically should be changed, why it should be changed, and what you should change it to to make it better. Okay, so I've got some images here. So this one here is just about the brainstorming process. Now here, uh, I'm using the word design critique. So this is where you need to do a little bit of critical thinking. So the ATL skill of thinking. So when you're looking at your product, you're not just talking about how wonderful it is. You're actually talking about some things that should be changed to make it better. So critical thinking or the design critique is the frame of mind you should have for this process. Um, now here is an example of image to show exactly some changes that could be made. So on the, on the left is the original image and on the right it shows how it should be improved and changed and below it actually gives a little bit of a reason why it should be changed. So that's a good, that's very clear, it very, communicates very clear to the assessor, the product, how it should be changed and why. Um, here again, images. So if you're baking a cake and uh, you're talking about the colours, perhaps you might illustrate and you say, my cake was supposed to be pink, but it turned out brown. If I had my time again, I would change it so it's more pink, like the middle image, not like the outside images. So again, using images to try and illustrate exactly what should be changed to be made to make your uh, product better. Oops, spelled the word wrong there. Let me fix that up. There we go. Um, okay, the next bit. Okay, here's an example of some students' work, and they're using primarily words, but you can see they've got some Google uh, Docs there that can actually link link to their product so I can actually see some things. But you, you need that combination of words, basically, and images as well. Uh, here's another student who's just used words. You can just use words, no problem. But if you're having trouble articulating yourself, use some Im images. You can even do some sketches. Um, here is a student who set up a nice little table. He's actually used the design specification as the um, as as the like a starting point, and he's talked about the different color schemes and things, and he's even got some um, the actual colors, so I can clearly see what he's talking about. So this is very very neat layout and very easy for the assessor to read and give good marks to. Uh, here's another student who's just first of all started listing the different things that could be could be changed, and then they go into deeper with some justification explanations. Now, this last image here, these last two images, um, you are familiar with this process because basically teachers do this all the time. You submit work to some teachers, they get their red pen out, they circle problems, and then if it's a teacher with a bit of time, they'll probably actually mention and say, you did this wrong, you should do this. So this is a teacher actually identifying an issue and explaining what you should change it to. So when you're, in, when you're completing strand three, Think like a teacher. Think like you're assessing uh, a student's work with your red pen out. And you can see the bonnet, bottom image is like um, using the Google Doc with the, the notes as well. So that's the kind of mindset that we need for this. Now, um, I'm going to finish here with the uh, talk about the assessment criteria and the differentiation. So first of all, when you produce your work for Strand 3, if you outline uh, just doing an outline, so it means you've started with your list, but then you start to outline how the solution could be improved, you'll get four out of eight. But if you actually describe, you'll be able to get six out of eight. So if you describe how the solution could be improved, but if you explain, you'll get eight out of eight. So you can see the clear progression. It's not actually in the assessment criteria, but the, the one prior to that would be a list, start with a list and start to outline and then describe it, but if you can fully explain it, you will get a score of eight out of eight. Now, one other thing too that I just noticed that I didn't have here in my document, you need to talk about changes to your product, but you also need to talk about changes to your plan as well. 
So way back um, at the start of criterion C, you would have created a plan, that's strand one. Now, throughout the design process, it's very common that plans change. Maybe you got sick, or maybe something broke, or maybe you lost your work, whatever it might be, or the client had some new ideas. So there's lots of changes to the product, but also changes to your plan along the way. So in this section, focus on changes to your product, but also ch changes to your plan. And this is where you might want to think about your time management skills and your organization ATL skills and things. You know what, if, if I had better materials or more materials or different types of nails, or I had used my time more wisely, if I spent more time um, mixing the products or whatever it might be, um, you'll, you can get your, yourself top marks. So you talk about changes to your product and changes to your plan. And that's how you get a score of eight out of eight for strand three. Criterion D, strand three. Good luck with your summative assessment.